Shalom family, Shalom. This is BOW Bay Area here. This is in Manawa here. And I got my brother right here too. Shalom family, Shalom. Khan, Khan. And today we're just going to be talking about appreciation, right? Appreciation is, is something that we don't do as much as we should, right? And I just wanted to go into um like the ins and outs of appreciation. There's not really a specific thing I'm going to go into. But I'm just going to talk about just the ins and outs, like I said. And um, shout out to my brother. Um, I don't know if you're watching, but the brother Serge, he told me to make a lesson about appreciation. So if you're watching, thank you. But um, let's start in the law. Let's start in the Ten Commandments. Let's go to um, Exodus 20 and 12. Right. <clears throat> This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Right, so right here it says, honor thy mother and father. Right, and that could go into appreciation. And even though, like, it should be common sense now, this is a law that most of, no, I'm not going to, oh, I can say most of our people don't really do. It's such a simple but hard law to keep because all I hear in Israel is, oh, yeah, I got problems with my pops. Oh, my mom doing this and that. Oh, it's this and that. It's just like a war between us. Like, bro, there's no peace in Israel. Right. But the thing is, we got to appreciate our, our parents because they're the one that brought us into this world. They're the vessels that God used to bring us in this world. You wouldn't be here without them. So that's why it's such an important uh, commandment to honor them, man. It's it's so simple, but yet so hard in Israel. Let's um, let's go to Sirach thirty one, right? And let's go to verse twenty two, Baba Kesha. Parents are important, family. And these next couple of verses are going to talk about um, the importance. Of like this is the book of Sirach, chapter 31 and verse 22. God. My son, hear me and despise me not. And at the last, thou shalt find, as I told thee, and all thy works be quick. So there shall, so there, so shall there no sickness come unto thee. So a father should tell his son, A. Hey, um, at the last, thou shalt not find, as I told thee, in all thy works, be quick. This father is giving his son advice because why? So shall there no sickness come upon thee, right? A father should be looking out for their son, and that's why a son should appreciate their father. But what is Israel going? Uh, what is Israel doing? They're saying, "Oh, my dad left me, so I don't gotta appreciate them," and that's true. Your pops is not doing the role too. So it is it goes both, it goes both ways, right? So what I'm trying to say to your family is like a, a, a family is, is an important structure to have in. Unfortunately, the nation of Israel, so-called blacks and Hispanics, don't have that for the most part, right? Um, because at the end of the day, a loving father is not gonna let you fail, he's not gonna let you get sick, he's not gonna let you go down the pit. Right, let's go to um let's go to Proverbs 23. Right. Let's go to Proverbs 23. And um go to verse 12, Baba Kasha. Verse 12 to 14, Baba Kasha. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 23 and verse 12. Apply thine heart unto instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Keep reading. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Right. So, so right there, family, the, the father figure is is so important because 
the father is going to be the one to discipline his son right right here it says apply thine heart unto instruction he's talking to the son and thine ears to the word of knowledge who does the son go to get those things his father right or it should be that way right but the father's like hey man if you mess up i have to correct you right because a slap of the wrist is better is better than getting shot in the streets a, a, a getting beat with the rod is better than getting jumped in the streets right so it's so important to appreciate our, our father figures right because they're going to be the ones to save us from hell to save us from the grave to save us from um that state right so um and personally i'm gonna say this i got beat as hell as a child and at the time i was like why why this why 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 is it happening to me like but at the end of the day when i grew up and matured i realized oh damn my father did really help me beating the hell out of me you know because that's when it clicks or it should click anyways right I i'm sure matas went through the same thing Getting, getting beat was was a scary thing but guess what we got our act right so all present to the most high for correction right um let's go let's go back to Sirac. let's go back to Sirac, um chapter 30 and we're going to start from the top and um just read down Baba mm -hmm. this is the book of Sirac from the top no, chapter 30 from the top, Salakia. He that loveth his son causes him off to feel the rod, that he may have joy of him in the end. Okay, why does it say that, Mataza? He that loveth his son causes um, him off to feel the rod. Because if you love your son, you're going to discipline him. You're going to make sure you're getting right so when he grows up, he don't have he don't have these childish problems that he had when he was a kid. Because if you allow kids to think that the thing that they're the things bad that they're doing is okay, they're going to take him into adulthood. There you go, King. Okay. Perfect. Now, um, keep reading, Bob Kishore. <clears throat> he, verse 2, he that chastiseth his son shall have joy in him and shall mm -hmm. rejoice of him among his acquaintance. Mm -hmm. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. Right. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. Okay. That's powerful, right? Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. It says that because the son learned everything that the father taught him. So his father's instructions lived on, family. That's what it's talking about here, right? That's what it's talking about here. It's so important to understand. Hey, do this so you can succeed, right? And those words live on, right? We don't need Moses today. Because his word lives on. The laws, the law, sessions, and commandments lived on after Moses. We don't need Moses telling us every single day, hey, do X, Y, and Z. Hey, wear your fringes. Hey, don't eat pork. Don't do that. No, his words lived on, and we're doing what Moses told us to do. Right? Um, keep reading, Oxalakia. Uh, for he hath left one behind him that is like himself. Right. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him. And when he died, he was not sorrowful. Okay. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies, and one that shall requite kindness to his friends. Mm. He That's that amazing. he that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds, and his bowels will be troubled at every cry. A horse not broken becometh headstrong, and a child left to himself will be willful. Yeah, because, you know, when we kids and we don't get discipline, I've seen a lot of this. Like, they're just going to do whatever the hell they want. Um, I was talking to the brothers, right? Um, and we were talking about how, like, kids don't have manners no more. And the parents are not teaching those manners. For example, you know, a lot of kids, when they go to people's houses they've never been to, they don't say hi to everyone in the house. They just go to the, they see a couch and then are glued to their phones they're just doing whatever the hell they want they're not saying oh hey how's it going hey thank you for inviting us thank you for the food that you've given us no they're just doing whatever the hell they want it's simple manners like that man it's simple things but you know that's why i said right here um 
Where's that at? The head strong? Um verse eight. Right here, so like yeah. Yeah, a horse not broken down become if headstrong, and a child left to himself will be willful. That child is doing whatever the hell they want, and that parent that brought them there is not doing anything about it. That's why it's so important to appreciate our parents because our parents are gonna teach us manners and instruction, right? Um, keep reading though, Locke. Con verse nine. Cocker thy child, and he will make thee afraid. Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. Mm. Laugh not with him, lest thou have sorrow with him, and lest thou gnash thy teeth in the end. Give him no liberty in his youth, and wink not at his follies. Mm. Bow down his neck while he is young, and beat him on the side. Beat him on the sides while he is a child, lest he wax stubborn and be disobedient unto thee, and so bring sorrow to thine heart. Chastise thy son and hold him to labor, lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. Okay, Con. So you 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 hear the message, right? Chasten thy son and hold him to labor. Give him responsibilities. Keep him disciplined so he can be riding the head, you know, because it said lest lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. You know. It's so important to appreciate our father figures in, in general because it's going to keep us, it's going to keep us right. It's going to keep us in the right state of mind. You know, I appreciate my pops for everything he did. Right. And um, I'm pretty sure one of the reasons why I'm here sitting teaching this word is because of my pops. So um, you know, I always give um my thanks to him, always. Let's um Let's go a chapter before. Let's go to Sirach 29. And let's read um, verses 14 through 17, Baba Kesha. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 29, and verse 14. An honest man is surety for his neighbor, but he that is impudent will forsake him. Forget not the friendship of thy surety, for he hath given his life for thee. A sinner will overthrow the good estate of his surety. And he that is of an unthankful mind will leave him in danger that delivered him. Yeah, so pretty much why, why I brought this out, man, it's powerful. You you got to appreciate the people that truly have your back, right? It says, a honest man is surety for his neighbor, right? An honest man is going to take care of his neighbor, right? Because what is one of the laws in, in Leviticus 19? Love thy neighbor as yourself, you know? He's going to keep, he's going to keep his neighbor... In the right he's going to keep his neighbor corrected he's going to keep his neighbor um right beside him right but it said right here but but it said right here and he that is of an unthankful mind will leave him in danger the honest man won't do that the honest man will keep him by his side and be like hey bro you with me bro hey no you good i'm not gonna let you uh i'm not gonna let you fall down this cliff i'm not gonna let you do this i'm not gonna let you do that because why because I love you, brother, and I want the best for you. So appreciate the people that really have your back. There's a lot of people in Israel that don't got other Israelites back. Right? That what is that? What, what what's that curse? Um Deuteronomy 28 and 54. Yeah, kind of right. So exactly evil eye towards your brother. Exactly. And that's just the curses at the end of the day, family. But we got to get back into these laws, statutes, and commandments, family, because it's gonna keep us straight. We got to appreciate our neighbors, family. Appreciate, 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 appreciate. Right. Um, let's move on. Let's go to um, Proverbs 8. Let's go to Proverbs 8. And let's read um, verses 10 and 11. Baba Gesha. <clears throat> this is the book of Proverbs. Chapter 8 and verse 10. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Right. So what, what Solomon is trying to say here is like, bro, appreciate the wisdom that's inside this book. Appreciate the wisdom that's inside this book, book um, more than riches, more than rubies, more than gold, more than silver. Because this is this is going to give you everlasting life. This is going to give you the riches in heaven. Not these rubies are in, 
that are like, you know, in the ground in this earth. You know what I'm saying? They can do only so much for us, family. But the wisdom of the most high God is something we have to appreciate. But throughout the whole Bible, we didn't. We have to change that, family. We have to change that. Appreciate the wisdom that God has um, bestowed upon us, you know. Um, let's move on. Let's go to um, the story of the prodigal son, because I feel like this is real important. Um, kind of goes back into that Proverbs 8. This is um, Luke chapter 15. Now. And um, we're going to start at verse 11 and just read on down. All right. This is Luke chapter 15 from the top. No, from 11. Um, oh, 11? Okay, go on. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Mm-hmm. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Right. So there's two sons. Right. I don't I don't know if y'all know the story, but there's two sons. Right. And there's a father. The father gives them um, a, um, the father's portions, you know, one of um, so like it. And one of them just goes out and does whatever. Um, it's like it does whatever the hell he wants to do right i'm just trying to give you all context to see um to see if you're following right so like yeah you can move on uh, <clears throat> and when he had spent all there when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he mm -hmm. began to be in want and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine mm -hmm. and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, mm -hmm. and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Okay, so what's happening here, family? So if you're not paying attention, the son runs away. And when he runs away, there's a famine in the land that he's in. And he has to become a servant. But when he becomes a servant, he's like, damn, I'm really like experiencing this, these terrible, these terrible things. I need to go back to my father because even his servants have bread to eat. And this son right here was eating what the pigs were eating. So he's like, yeah, nah, I got to go back to my father. Let's keep reading, though, family. It's going to get good. God. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no, worth, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Right. So right here, family, it's like it for cutting you off. But right here, after the fact, the son's like, OK. Yeah, no, nah, I think my father really just wants the best for me. So he runs, he runs back to his father. His father sees him and his father gives him compassion. Right. Because that's what a father should do. Right. Because sometimes, you know, our sons be going off. But we have to be the stronger person. Well, I'm not a father, but if I was a father, I have to be the stronger person and say, son, it's all right. As long as you repent it, as long as you realize what you've done i'm gonna bring you back in right and there's a there's a there's a moral to the story to that but um i just want you i just want y'all to realize like yeah it's so important to appreciate 
um, what our what our fathers give us, because sometimes we don't even appreciate it until we lose it. And that's pretty much the case throughout the whole Bible. We we don't appreciate the things that we had until we lose it. So um, let's keep reading, though, because the story's not done. So like, yeah. Time. And it reads and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they mm -hmm. began to be married. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, thy brother is come and thy father has killed the fatted calf. calf because he caused, because he has received himself in sound, and he was angry and would go and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him, and he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son was come, which have devoured the living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Right. So the, the, the son that did everything good, right? That did everything his father told him was like hella mad. It was like, man, I've never got a party. I never got this. I never got that. But this, there's a moral to the story. Like, um, essentially, essentially, like um, the the last the the kid, the the vagabond kid, as you can say, you know, was lost and now found again. That's the that's the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? So Essentially, moral of the story is we have to uh, we're going to have to appreciate what the Most High has done for us. You know, it's going to happen sooner or later because it's prophecy. But the moral story is, um, like I said, the last sheep of the house of Israel is going to appreciate what the Most High has done for us because it's essentially prophesied. Man. He, he had made a promise with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So um, just. Moral of the story, like I said, I said this three times. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate. Right. Because we don't know, we don't know we lost something until we don't have it no more, really. But um, let's continue. Let's go back to the book of Sirach. Let's go to Sirach um chapter three. Chapter what? Chapter three. Sirach chapter three. And we're gonna read verses um 17 through 20. Man, I keep skipping it. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 3, and verse 17. My son, go on with thy business in meekness, so shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself. And thou shalt find favor before the Lord. Many are in high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. For the power of the Lord is great, and he is honored of the lowly. Right. So essentially what, what um, the book of Sirach is saying is like, if you're of status, appreciate the things that you do have. Right. Because if you do appreciate everything that you do have, the most high will have favor in you. Right. Because right here, for, for it says, for the power of the Lord is great, and he is honored of the lowly. He is honored of the people that appreciate him, but still don't have as much. Right. And that's really the story of Israel for you. Right. And today's world, we don't have that much. But us still teaching the law, statutes, and commandments, and still giving praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, the Most High finds favor in that. Right. So I, I just thought that was important. Um, let's go to the book of Psalms, though. Um, chapter 44. 
and we're going to read um verses one through eight baba kasha god this is the book of psalms chapter 44 from the top we have heard with our ears O god our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days in the times of old how thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand and plantedest them how thou didst afflict the people and cast them out for they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hadst a favor unto them thou art my king o god command deliverances for jacob <clears throat> Through, through thee, we will push down our enemies. Mm -hmm. Through thy name, we will tread them under that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hadst saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hated us. And God, we boast all day long and praise thy name forever. Salah. In God, we boast all day long and praise thy name forever. Right. Because what did David say? It's, he said right here, for I will not trust my bow, neither neither shall my sword save me. Right? We have to appreciate the most high always, 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 always. You know, and of course he's talking about, you know, we've, we've killed our enemies, but, you know, and that's pretty much when we really only appreciate the most high, when the most high delivered us. But I, I wanted to hearken on, and we... In God, we boast all day long. We have to do that, family. No matter the wins or the lot, or no matter the wins or the losses, man. Give all praises to the most high. Always. Always. Because this is not our journey at the end of the day. We're living the journey that the most high bestowed unto us. So it's it's not really, it's not really like our our say in anything you know we always just have to give our praise to to the most high right appreciate those things and appreciate the wins don't just don't just hearken on the losses and say oh man you know I, man bro but remember the time that we did lose that war oh remember the time we did lose this oh remember the time we did lose that no don't just hearken on to those things because hey we're gonna win too but don't just but don't just say, oh, thank you, God, when, when we get the dubs. Thank God always, man. Thank him always. Always, always, always. We have to. Um, let's go to Second Maccabees, though. And I'm gonna show y'all some instances where we gave uh, appreciation and thanks to the most high. But um, this is after the fact, you know, we won um like a war of some kind. Let's go to Second Maccabees 15. Um, and start from verses, start at verse 29 and end at 36. This is the book of first Maccabees, or it's like your second Maccabees, chapter 15 and verse 29. Then they made a great shout and a noise, praising the Almighty in their own language. And Judas, who was ever the chief defender of the citizens, both in body and mind, and who continued his love toward his countrymen all his life commanded to strike off Nicanor's head and his hand with his shoulder mm -hmm. and bring them to Jerusalem. So when he was there and called them of his nation together and set the priest before the altar, he sent for them that were of the tower and showed them vile Nicanor's head and the hand of that blasphemer with which with proud brags he had stretched out against the holy temple of the Almighty. And when he had cut off the tongue of that ungodly Nicanor, he commanded that they should give it by peace unto the fowls and hang up the reward of his madness before the temple. So every man prays toward the heaven, the glorious Lord, saying, Blessed be he that hath kept his own place undefiled. He hanged also Nicanor's head upon the tower and evident an evident and manifest sign unto all of the help of the Lord. And they ordained with all common decree in no case 
to let that day pass, to not, you no, know, in no case to let that day pass without solemnity, but to celebrate the 13th, you no, know, the 30th day of the 12th month, which in the Syrian tongue is called Adar, the day before Mordecai's day. Right. So this is when um, we killed, you know, um, our oppressor Nicanor. And, you know, they're just giving all thanks, honor and glory to, to Yahweh, of course. But the thing is, is like, of course, yes, we should appreciate those wins. Right. But the reason why I brought this up is because. In the Bible, throughout the Bible, we only said those things when we when we won, when we won something. And I want that to change family. Like, I want that to change in our in our nation. I want I want us to really appreciate the wins and the losses, like I said. And we're going to get another one. Let's get Purim. Let's get Purim. Let's go to Esther now. Because I feel like, you know, we got to change something. Because nothing's really happening as far as right now. And, of course, you know, we're, we're in Babylon, of course. And, of, of course, you know, we're going through things ourselves. But at the end of the day, you know, the most high has a plan for every single one of us. So why not appreciate that plan? Why not say thank you, God? You know? But hey, let's um start at verse um read verses 18 to 22, Bible Kesha. God, this is the book of Esther, chapter 9, and verse 18. But the Jews that were at Shushan assembled together on the 13th day thereof, and on the 14th day thereof. And on the 15th day of the same, they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the villages that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the 14th day of the month of Dar a day of gladness and feasting and a good day and of sending portions one to another. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all providences of the king Ahasuerus both nigh and far to establish this month to establish this like among them that they should make that they should keep the 14th day of the month adar and the 15th day of the same yearly as the days wherein the jews rested from their enemies and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day that they should make them days of feasting and joy and of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor Right. So, you know, the reason why the Most High had had our back is because at the end of the day, it's a transactional thing. Of course, the Most High's mercy is everlasting. But the reason why the Most High had favor in the Jews is because of Esther and Mordecai. They're the ones that saved the nation. They're the one that said, OK, I'm going to I'm going to take that um, responsibility and save my people. It's a transactional thing, family. We have to appreciate that, though, because the Most High didn't have to help Esther and Mordecai. The Most High didn't have to, family. That, that and that's the thing, too. In reality, he don't got to do anything. He don't he don't have to do what he's doing for us, but he's doing it anyways, because guess what? He said, yeah, I love y'all and I made a covenant with your uh, with your forefathers. But even that he didn't have to make a covenant with his forefathers, but he chose to. The Most High chose us. It's not that he needs to deal with us. He chose us. So why not appreciate him? Why not appreciate him? Right? In Babylon or in heaven. And in heaven. So like you. Why not appreciate him? Oh, because, you know what I'm saying? I can't pay my rent. And he doesn't give me money for food. Oh, because, you know what I'm saying? I'm having car problems. And uh, I got into a car crash. Oh, because, you know, my friend died and, you know, doesn't the Bible say he gives lives and takes it? Like, bro. Like, you, you don't have the power to change any of that. So why get mad at God? Why, why are you mad at God? Why is our people mad at God, Amatiza? Ungrateful. They're ungrateful. So ungrateful, man. And... It's like, like I said, like I wanted to, like when I first made this lesson, I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to look to see where Israel actually appreciated the Most High, 
actually wanted to find scriptures. But when I was actually reading the Bible, we only gave thanks to God when he made us win. Only. And we complained the rest of the time. Sometimes I'm thinking, why did he choose us? Sometimes I think that family, why did he choose blacks and Hispanics? Because all we do is gossip and complain. Right. Matter of fact, this is. Let's get um. Let's get that one in um in Matthew. Hold on. Let me uh let me get this real quick. Hold up. Tyree and Zidon. Tyree and Zidon. You know what I want in, in the book of Matthew? I referring to what? Oh, Matthew fifteen and twenty one. Are you talking about? Are you talking about that account? Yeah, God. Let's get this. Let's um start from. Is that the one I want? Hold up. Um. No, let's get the one in Luke. Um, get um Luke ten, and start at verse thirteen. So like yeah. I didn't have this in my lesson. This is the book of Luke, chapter 10 and verse 13. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if thy for if the mighty works have been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Right. Man. Tyree and Zidon would have repented a long time ago. But guess what? Israel, Israel is still, is still what? We, we're not repenting. But if if Tyree and Zidon were, uh, were to get the chance, they would have. That's why I'm saying we're so we're we're such an ungrateful people, but God chose us for a reason. There's a reason why the most high chose us. And sometimes I'm like, okay. Sometimes we can't really see it in today's in today's perspective, but at the end, I know that the Most High has a greater plan for us. I know the Most High has a better plan for us because I have faith in him, right? But I'm just saying, I, I wanted to bring this out because, bro, like, these other nations would have repented long time ago if they had the chance, man. Long time ago. But we're just so, such a stiff-necked people we don't listen. We're stubborn. And we just complain. Let's talk about that, bro. Why Why do we complain, bro? Why can't we just say it is what it is and keep it pushing? Right? Why can't we just say, hey, let's, hey, bro, fuck it. Right? Slack it for my language. But fuck it, man. Fuck it. Fuck all these things that are going on in my life. And let me push this word, man. Let me, let me. Appreciate the most high God like he should be appreciated, man. But what is our nation doing? Saying, hey, man, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm going to sell my soul for this money, man. Oh, yeah. No, forget God, man. It's about this money. It's about this break. It's about this. Uh, uh, uh. That all that don't matter, man. All that doesn't matter. But, um. Let's 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 move on from that. Let's um let's go to my next verse. Let's go to um let me see. Is that one next? Let's go to the apocrypha, the three holy children. Right. And we're almost done, family. Um I like a couple more. Well, let's go to the Apocrypha real quick. We're going to read something. Um, and I like this story, too, because, matter of fact, we'll just read it for ourselves. We'll read it. We'll read it. Let me um, try to find it. Um, start at verse um, 28, Bapa Kasha. You say you want me to go to where? Um, the, the three holy children, the prayer of Isaiah. Uh-huh. 
Um, start at verse 28. You said start at verse 28? Gone. Then the three, as out of one mouth, praised, glorified, and blessed God in the furnace, saying, Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, mm -hmm. and to be praised and exalted above all forever. And blessed is thy glorious and holy name, and to be praised and exalted above all forever. Okay, so what had happened was, um, if you guys don't know, this is the same story as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the Bible. So right here, this is after the fact. And we're going to read everything that um, that they're just um, giving thanks and appreciating, right? It like it like names all these things down that they're that they appreciate and thank the most high for. And I wanted to get this for just just to get it. Let's um, let's continue, though. So you. Come on. Blessed art thou in the temple of thine holy glory and to be praised and glorified above all forever. Mm -hmm. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and sittest upon the cherubims and to be praised and exalted all forever above all forever blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom and to be praised and glorified above all forever blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven and above all to be praised and glorified forever O oh, all ye works of the lord bless ye the lord praise and exalt him above all forever O ye heavens, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye angels of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O all ye waters that be above the heaven, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O all ye powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye sun and moon, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O every shower and dew, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O all ye winds, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye fire and heat, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye winter, and summer, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. <coughs> o ye dews and storms of snow, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye nights and days, bless ye the Lord, and bless and exalt him above all forever. O ye light and darkness, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye ice and cold, Bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye frost and snow, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye lightnings and clouds, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O let the earth bless the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye mountains and little hills, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O all ye things that grow in the earth, Bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye mountains, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye seas and rivers, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye fowls of air, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O all ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye children of men, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O Israel, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye holy men of the heart, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. O Ananias, Azarius, Misael, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. For he hath delivered us from hell and saved us from the hand of death, 
and delivered us out of the midst of the furnace and burning flame. Even out of the midst of the fire hath he delivered us. O oh, thanks unto the Lord, because he is gracious, for his mercy endureth forever. O all, oh, all ye that worship the Lord, bless the God of gods, praise him, and give him thanks, for his mercy endureth forever. Okay, family. That was very long-winded, family, right? But why do you think why do you think I had a Matazar read all that? The reason why is we don't we don't do that. I don't do that. And I'm making this lesson. I don't give thanks to everything that God has given me. We got to start giving thanks to every single thing. Appreciate every single thing. Because when we don't have it, then we're going to realize, like, damn. Like, I don't got, like, like the whales. All right, man, they're kind of cute, man. But, damn, they're, they're gone? Damn, man. Oh, the earth? Hey, man, I remember when I used to go uh, go to and fro and, and see the views and whatnot. Like, but when we lose it. We're like, damn, I took it for granted. As a nation family, we take things for granted. That's why I had a read the whole thing, because you guys have to appreciate every single thing. And I know they said, and I know uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said all this because they got saved from the furnace. But it still applies to us today. We have to appreciate everything. We have to appreciate the winds, the lightning, the darkness, the light, the heavens, every single thing. Because the most high, hey, what um, what did the most high give Israel? The earth. The earth. Dominion. Right? Appreciate the things that the most high is going to give you, family. Appreciate, appreciate, and appreciate. Um, but yeah, let's move on. Um, let's go to Exodus 31. We're going to start from the top. We're going to read down to verse um, 14. You said Exodus 31? Salakia 32 from the top. You said read down to where? On um, the 14. So one through 14. <clears throat> this is the book of Exodus chapter 31 from the top. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of, Ur, of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God and wisdom and an understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones, to set them. Hey, where, where you at, King? You said 31 from the top. No, 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 32. So, ah, I said 32, so like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, 32 from the top, Bach. Uh, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 32 from the top. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up. Make us gods which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in the ears, in their ears and brought them unto Aaron, and he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Right. So, if you guys are not following, this is when Moses had went on top of the Mount, uh, Mount Sinai, I believe, and was, you know, getting word from, uh, from the Most High, right? And you know, the people were like, hey, man, like, what? When's Moses coming down, man? It's, it's, you know, they're looking. They're like, hey, it's been, it's been a minute. So they're like, okay, you know what? 
matter of fact, gather everyone's earrings, right? Jewelry, whatnot, and let's make a and let's make uh an image of, of God. Let's make him um a golden calf, right? Because this is the person that uh or this is the deity that brought us out of Egypt. Man, Israel was so bored, and Israel was so impatient, right? Not appreciating the most high after delivering them out of Egypt. Like, it's crazy. But uh, continue, Wax. I like you. Uh, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them. And I Okay. Will... So right here, right? And the most high, it's a like it for cutting you off, but the most high, he's hot. He's like, what he say? He said, I have seen this people and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone. That my that my wrath may wax hot against them. The most high was hot because he was like, bro, I delivered you out of Egypt, and this is what you pay me back with. Right? But let's keep reading. And Moses slug you. Okay, come. Uh, this is verse 10. And that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord. Why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and said it unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Right. So this is a funny, this this is kind of funny, right? Because um right here it says, Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out? to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. So that's why Moses had to like remind the most high, like, Hey, like, are you just going to, are you going to let the Egyptians laugh? Because, because it would be kind of crazy if you were to, to deliver us out of Egypt and then just slay us in the mountains. Like that's crazy. So Moses had to like talk with the most high. And then the most high was like, man, all right, it's good, bro. But it is crazy because, you know, even like, of course, the most high doesn't have to quote unquote repent, right? But you know, that's just like the figure of speech, right? Most high was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna um I'm gonna let y'all be, right? But it's just funny because the most high was really gonna destroy them, but then Moses had to be like, bro, don't don't have us be a laughing stock, you know, having you um kill all our people um in the mountains rather than just like leaving us in egypt because that would be kind of crazy if, if you ask me right i don't know about you about this but that would be kind of crazy if uh, the, the most High delivered us out of egypt and then just killed us right after like that'd be crazy um i just thought that was funny but it really isn't funny at the same time because our like i said our people are stiff necked so that's why the most i was like nah bro i, I want to deal with this i don't want to deal with this Okay. But I mean, should you see a whole generation of people didn't even make it out of the wilderness? So man, that too, man, that too, which is crazy. So hey, man, the the moral of the story: remember who delivers you, family. 
remember, man, be grateful. Appreciate the things that you do have, right? That's what the lesson is about, right? Um, let's go, let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to um first Thessalonians 5 and 18. New Testament, man. Five and eighteen. This is the book of First Thessalonians, chapter five, and verse eighteen. In everything, give thanks. Oh, it's like keep reading, it's like yeah. For this is the will of God in Hamashiach Yahushai concerning you. Come, in everything, give thanks. That's that's what Yahweh Shah wants us to do, right? Give thanks. Give thanks like how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were giving thanks. Give thanks to the wind. Give thanks for the food on your plate. Give thanks for the flowers, for the dogs, for the cats, for the monkeys, like everything, man. Give thanks, man. Appreciate everything that the Most High gave you dominion over. Right? Because, right, it's, it's pretty much an order. It said... For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's the will. Appreciate the things that you have, right? Let's keep going. Let's go. We're going back to Psalms. Psalms chapter 100, um, verses 1 through 5. You said, you said chapter 100, verse 5? Uh, 1 through 5. Comes the water out. Oh, that's the whole chapter. Yeah, come. On. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 100, from the top. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Mm -hmm. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his, his truth endureth to all generations. Appreciate his everlasting mercy. Because like, like how we just brought up, he could have slain us in the mountains, in the wilderness. But with his everlasting mercy, you know, he gave us grace, you know? So, um... Right here, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Imagine we went to heaven just being like, oh, yeah, I'm walking through my gate. You know, oh, yeah, I'm tribe of Issachar or I'm tribe of Judah or I'm tribe of Zebulon. Like, oh, yeah, this is for me. Right. What does it say right here? It said, it is he that have made us and not we ourselves. So who are we to say, oh, yeah, I'm I'm big, bad wolf. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. Who are we to say those things, man? The most high made this that way. Right. It's not us. The mo we got to give all praises to the most high always. That's that is that's playing upon tables, family. Right. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 16. This is something that our people really don't really don't hearken to. And it's crazy. Let's get that real quick. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and verse 16. Right. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one more soul of meat sold his birthright. So Esau sold his birthright to who? To Jacob. To Jacob. And we derive from Jacob family, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. But why don't we, but why don't we take heed unto that birthright? Why don't we, why don't we say, okay, God chose us. So we're going to do what God tells us to do. Why don't we do that? It was literally given to us. It wasn't even supposed to be for us, but it was given to us, family. Right? Like, our people don't appreciate, man. That's what it is. Like, like the Bible said, our people are stiff-necked people. And um, um, we don't have to get it because it's always it's always brought up. But, you know, in Baruch chapter 2, it says we are stiff-necked people, but... Um, Later on, we'll find out, like, oh, yeah, we got to praise the most high and we'll repent, you know? Um, but 
as of right now, the nation just doesn't appreciate the birthright that we got, man. But like Baruch too says, man, we're gonna we're gonna get out of that stiff neck um um uh, mindset and then repent, you know, or win. Um, let's move on though. We're gonna get um numbers eleven. Or uh, Slacker, not numbers eleven. Oh yeah, it is numbers eleven, Slacky. And uh, let me see. Let's get this real quick. We're gonna read. Um, I think we're reading the whole chapter. Let me see. Yeah, let's go over the the, the whole chapter real quick, and we'll just see what happens, family. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 11, from the top. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them <clears throat> that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Mm -hmm. And the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Tibera, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell, a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again, and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish, which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers, and the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But now our soul is dry away, there is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes okay man so israel bro you see how ungrateful israel is what they say bro what they say they say i miss massa that's what they just say that's what i just that's what i just read right here that they miss massa because we used to get onions and we used to get um garlic and leeks and and fish but in this in this captivity or in the wilderness, we're only getting manna. But family, it's a journey. It's always been a journey with us, family. We have to be patient and appreciate the things that we do have, right? Um, but yeah, that's 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 that. Let's keep let's read the whole story, Baba Gesha. <clears throat> but now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes and the manna was as coriander seed and the color thereof as the color of bedellium and the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills or beat it in a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it and the taste of it was as the taste of a fresh oil then when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them? That thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father bearing the suckling child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers. Right. So Moses right here, he's like, man, I'm feeling this too. Matter of fact, Yahweh, like Yahweh, the burden's on me now, man. Because I took them out of Egypt and now they're like complaining, complaining, complaining. Moses is kind of like, damn, like, like, I'm, I'm kind of going through it too. He said, have I conceived all his, all these people? Have I begotten them that thou should have said unto me, carry them in my bosom as a nursing father, bearing a suckling child. Like Moses kind of feels like a, he feels a weight on him. Right. So he's like, damn, man. Like, I, I ain't gonna lie, man. I hear him. I hear him. But um, let's keep going. King. Let's keep going. Whence thou I have flesh to give unto all this people, for they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. 
I am not able to bear all this people alone because it is too much. It is too heavy for me. Right. And, and if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee. Out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, let me not see any wretchedness. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee, and I will talk, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear not thyself alone. <clears throat> and say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month until they come out at your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? And Moses said, The people among whom I am are six hundred thousand footmen, and thou hast said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them, or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to su for them to suffice them? And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Mm. Thou shalt see now whether my words shall come to pass unto thee or not. Okay, so the, the Most High is telling Moses, "All right, bro, you think you think I'm not gonna give y'all food? You think I'm not gonna give you what y'all been asking for, bro? Don't doubt me. I I got you. I got you. Don't worry, right? And that's what the Most High is pretty much telling Moses, right? But let's keep going. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people." and set them round about the tabernacle. And Yahweh came down in a cloud and spake unto him, and took of the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Medad. And the spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord, Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets and the and that the Lord will put his spirit upon them. And Moses got him into the camp, and he and the children of Israel. And there went forth the wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp. And as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the and the people stood up all that day and all that night and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered the least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, eerie it was chewed. The wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kabroth Hateva. Yeah. Because they because there they buried the people that lusted. And the people mm -hmm. journeyed from Kabroth Hateva unto Hazaroth and abode at Hazaroth. And I don't want Amatazah to keep going, right? Because that was a long chapter. But essentially. Israel was not grateful. They was not grateful that they got out of Egypt. They was like, we need, we need meat. They get meat, 
but then the ones that lusted for me got killed. So the moral of the story, don't complain, man. That's really the moral of the story. Don't complain. Appreciate what you have, man. Because the most high doesn't like a complainer, bro. Like I said, we kind of just got to move like it is what it is and keep pushing in captivity in Babylon. Because, like, sure, we're going through the things that we're going through our, our family, but it, it's not like the most high has a plan at the end of the day. We can't necessarily change his plans. We just got to gotta move with the script. We got to move with the program. And that's just how it is, family. Don't complain because then the most high is going to get you. Right? That's the moral of the story. I know it was long-winded, but um, I wanted to get that story because that story is not brought up that much. Um, let's go. Um, we're almost done, family. Um, yeah, we're almost done. Let's go to um, Revelations 21 and 8. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. But the fearful and unbelieving. That's the one I want to kind of hark in right now. Um, the unbelieving. The people that... that that don't have faith in, in Yahweh Shai or in the Most High, that don't appreciate the things that they've done for us. The unbelieving um, shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Appreciate what your what your um, Savior done for us, family. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate. Because we don't appreciate that much. We don't. And if you're, if you're caught unbelieving, in, in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, then you're going to get God. Simple as that. Let's go to um, Zechariah 13, 8 and verse 9. We're almost done. We're almost done. Where is it at? Right, go. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 8 and verse 9. No, um, um, Zechariah 13, verses 8 and 9. It's like, yeah. This is Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two, third, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall carry, they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. Right. Start appreciating that you an Israelite. Start appreciating because guess what? You can be a two-third. So even being an Israelite ain't enough. Even being a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob isn't enough, family. We have to, we have to appreciate the law, statutes, and commandments, the Bible, our instruction, our culture, our cultura, our heritage, because this is this is what we live by, and we have to live by this, so that we don't get God and become the two thirds. Appreciate, appreciate what God has given us, right? Um, two more, two more passages. Let's go to Isaiah fifty-three. Um, verses 1 through 12, Bible Kasha. Where's it at? I was playing. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, from the top. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. 
and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was, bru he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his, and with his stripes we are healed. All, like, all we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned every one to his own way. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and whom shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So as as you may know, or you may not know, this is the prophecy of Yahweh Shai. And as we read right here, he did all these things for us. All these things. He was oppressed and he was afflicted right you know um this this like this this to me is like pretty pretty like emotional too like I, i'm not gonna lie like i always i always get like you know what i'm saying like serious when i read this passage because yeah how was shy he did so much just so a stiff-necked people can rebel just so that we can just rebel again Right. And I, I get angry at the fact that my people is going off because he did so much. He did so much so that so that we could be saved. And of course, you know, Israel is going to be saved, you know, and we're going to repent, of course. But right now, like, I, you know, it's um, it's it's just unfortunate to see my people the way that they are today. Right. The way that they that they care so much about, you know, the white man Jesus and the Virgin Mary and having a cross around their neck. And I appreciate what Yahweh Shai did when he um, sacrificed himself so that we so that we could be redeemed. Right. It's 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 sad. Like I like I honestly get so I, I get frustrated. I get emotional when I every single time I read this. Because it's like I like I want to like I'm like on oh, your house shy so I'm like bro I need to oh shoot man like I don't even know how to explain it man but moral of the story like yeah I wish I did so much for us man and we have to appreciate it we have to we have to reread Isaiah chapter fifty three if you need to but he did so much for us. We're going to get this last scripture. Let's get Matthew 4 and 17. Right. Bible Kesha. Let's get that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 17. From that time, Yahweh Shai began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, family. That's all I gotta say. Appreciate what appreciate the opportunity you have. 
because the heathens can't repent. Esau can't repent, as we read in um, Hebrews 12 and 16. Appreciate that you an Israelite. Appreciate that God gave you a gift. Appreciate that God is dealing with us. Right. And that's it. Um, I don't know if Amata Zai has anything to bring out, but that's pretty much it, family. No, you pretty you you hit the nail on the head, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So I just want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh through his son Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Hopefully, y'all got edified here, family. And um, if you have any questions, just comment down below. Um, reach us, reach us, you know, at all our channels. Go to go watch a Shire's channel, go watch Holy Vessels of um Holy Vessels of um Holy Vessels of War, I believe, and uh -huh. Israel Forged in Fire. And of course, the main channel, Believers of the Way. But um, other than that, family, um, I'm gonna digress and I'm just gonna say Shalom. Shalom, family, Shalom, peace and blessings. Keep enduring. You know, we're almost to the end. Come on, family. Ah, take care.